Hello and welcome to the part three of this of this tutorial. Uh, I guess let's let's get in with it. Uh, today we're going to be creating a basic layout. Uh, before we do that, I'm just going to cover some things that you need to be able to do. Um, so maybe if you're skipping ahead or have some previous Blender knowledge or what have you, uh, you know what you're well, you should know how to do. So we're going to select everything, shift select, X to delete, shift A to add an object. We can add a cube, we can scale the cube up, scale on the X direction, SX. We can uh, control R to add loop cut, we can scroll up to add more loop cuts, left click to confirm, right click to place them. We can go into face select mode, obviously when we're, we're in edit mode, which we tabbed here. Uh, we can alt click and shift alt click and if you have emulate three button mouse on like I do, um, which you can change in uh, edit preferences. Actually, let me go to full screen. Uh, and then you can E to extrude, and then you can S to scale, uh, and you can do Alt S. Uh, in this case, it doesn't matter. Um, let's see, how would you do it? Huh, I actually don't know how you do that. Uh, actually, I do know. Um, it's an add-on that I have, but uh, we'll cover that. We'll cover that later. Um, and then texturing. I well, we can also you know G to grab, R to rotate, um, basic stuff like that. And then some of our material stuff. Let's add a new material. Let's switch into material mode, uh, viewport shading, and then we can see it change here. And then we can have two materials. Add a new one and give it may, maybe a blue color, and then we need to assign it here. And we can assign this blue one to here. And then we can also say, not use a blue color, but we can also use an image texture, and then open up to a textures folder and uh, do stuff that way. Um, that's cool. If you want to remove a texture, which I did not show from last time, you have to go to the shading workspace. And then right now you can see this is you know, basically our material editor on the right, this links to the shader nodes. And then the shader node, we can delete it and then we're back to our base color. So that's how you remove a texture. You can also manually add a texture in here by going to texture and then image texture um, and then opening it from here, textures and doing stuff. Um, but it's also easier to just do it in here. So I think that's all the I think that's all the basic knowledge. Um, let's just select that X to delete, right? Um, I, um, I apologize. I apologize if I'm going too fast. Uh, actually, yeah, let me let me slow down. Um, so we're gonna go into solid mode, and then we're gonna go into uh, mat cap, random, and cavity and depth of field, just for niceness. And then we want to create a road. So we're going to uh, I, we're going to add a plane. This is this is going to be the tried and true method of creating a uh, act road that actually curves around in Blender. Um, for example, you could go into top view uh, and then start uh, going into vertex mode and then uh, GY and then add a loop cut, Control R move it up here, take these, extrude on the X direction, and you could create your first track like this. Um, honestly, I do encourage like your first track to be very simple, uh, which kind of is against the philosophy of this video. Um, but uh, regardless, we will press on. You can select all of these. Oh yeah, uh, basically I'm gonna be doing a lot of um, Blender hotkeys as I go, as I uh, forgot to show them previously. F, F to fill. That is the that is the command to fill. In edit mode, you select, uh, you can select these two vertices, and it now connects them with a uh, edge here. Uh, and then you can also select these three, and you get a triangle. Select uh, all four of them, and right now it's doing stuff weird. Why is it doing stuff weird? Because you already have a triangle but you're, you're still selecting this one. So if we didn't select this one, control box select to deselect, now we just have two triangles here. And here's a Blender hotkey, Alt J, uh, is converts your tris to quads, triangle to quad. 
maybe that's more advanced than you need. Maybe you can also just delete this, delete this, and then go select these, shift select these, and hit F to fill. Okay, so this is uh, one way to make a track, but how do you want to do it if you have like hills and you want to do it that way? Or like, you know, stuff that goes up and looks natural. So we're going to go and we're going to add a plane, shift A plane, and then here's the cool part. We're going to add, and no longer we're going to add a mesh, but we're going to add a curve. And I select Bezier curve just because I'm, just because I like that. Now, uh, before you do anything, you have to click on this plane and go over to this modifiers panel, the uh, blue wrench. And then we're going to add a modifier and we're going to add a ray modifier. So if you just increase the count, it's increasing the account that's arraying along. That's pretty self explanatory. Except we don't, uh, well, we want it to array, but we also want to follow the shape of the curve. So there's a deform under the deform, uh, add modifier deform, there's a curve. And we can select this curve object by, uh, you know, clicking on this. You can also do the eyedropper and then select the curve from here or from here. Um, it does not matter which one you use. And now you can see if we scale this curve up, aha, we were actually getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. And we can also scale this on the X direction. So that way, if you look at the uh, geometry right now, it's pretty triangulated. And honestly, you do you do want it like somewhat. Uh, you you, for example, you really don't want something like this for a Mario Kart Wii road. Uh, like that is too too many vertices and too small space, and it, you're just going to have a harder time uh, both UV unwrapping, but then also creating nice geometry. So maybe something like here is a good is a good mix um, of your scale. And then we're just going to uh, now we need this curve to go along and do stuff. So how do we how do we edit this curve? We can R to rotate the curve, S to scale, G to grab, and if we tab into edit mode, we now have these handles. So you can rotate these handles. You can grab endpoint of a handle. Um, if you haven't looked at busy curve stuff before, it's I mean it's intuitive just playing around with it. What's happening? Or relatively intuitive. I'm still not the best at it, but the math's pretty simple as well. Actually, math's pretty cool behind it. But that's neither here nor there. So we're still on top view and we can hit E to extrude, and boom, now we have cool stuff. And if we want to really see it, we can increase the count. Aha! So we can just keep increasing the count, and then we can go here, we can select this last one, E to extrude, R to rotate, E to extrude, R to rotate, E to extrude, R to rotate, maybe S to scale. Uh, and likewise, we can go here, scale it out. Um, we can go here, scale it, move it inward, uh, scale it out. And so now, I, uh, as a bit of general advice, um, long straights in Mario Kart Wii don't play very well. Um, and you just have to be always very conscious of um, your elevation change. Um, so I'm going to uh, X to delete these, um, delete these vertices. Um, exact same commands apply. You can also go here, go uh, click this, shift select this, and then right click and subdivide. And you can do this anyways with uh, just your geometry. If you select two vertices uh, or just any face in edit mode, right click and you can subdivide, which is pretty cool. Um, I don't want to have that in the middle, so I'm gonna just leave that as is. Um, I do like that turn at the beginning. Um, I'm gonna make it this way and then I'm gonna bring this down so you're, this turn goes into that one, and uh, I'm just generally shaping out how I want the track to play, and then uh, here maybe I want this way, and let me increase the count so uh, it's easier to see, both on my end and on your end. So something like this maybe, and then uh, I, yeah we. So I guess it, let me explain what we did with our modifier. Sorry, I <laughs> edited the, the curve without telling you what I was doing. So uh, this modifier uh, takes this plane object and then it arrays it and then it deforms it to this curve. 
And notice if we do stuff in edit mode, if we tab on our plane in edit mode, we can scale it on the y direction. And if we do that and we tab back, it looks like this. Uh, and that's because I uh, just it's arraying this plane. And now this plane has a different geometry look. And so it's still trying to follow along the best it can, but it's not going to do very well. Likewise, we can scale in the x direction a lot here. And then when we do that, we're going to have an uber, uber smooth curve, which we do not want. Um, just in general, actually, the more smooth it is, the more bumpy it will be. Uh, typically because the harder, the, the more that curve direction matters, and so the more sudden changes you have there, the more it's detected by the game's geometry, if that makes sense. Um, likewise, you can also scale it on the y direction here to give it some depth. You can also uh, scale y here, but that might not be what you're looking for. Scale y here is maybe better. Right, um, so I like I like that scaling, and then we'll obviously scale this all up at the end so it fits Marie Curie. Wii. But I uh, let's address the elephant in the room. This is not flat, or this no, <laughs> this is all flat, um, and maybe we don't want that. So I do want it flat at the beginning. I like these turns being flat. What I don't like is this turn being flat. Too much flatness. Well, like I uh, to give you an example, a Mari Circa three. I really like that track um, and how it plays, even though that is all flat. So you definitely can do all flat tracks. Um, note though that MC3 uh, is a SNES track, so it has an excuse for that. Um, so you just have to be careful about, um, yeah, to, height elevation gives you a lot of gameplay typically. Um, it adds a lot of depth there, but it can also be hard to balance or you just have to think of the implications of what that means in terms of how the player plays the track and that will mostly just be done by testing is really going to be your answer to everything but uh, we're doing stuff right now uh, look I select this point G and Z I lock it to the z-axis and boom I now have I now have a curve here uh, with with elevation if you notice if you know, if we bring it up really extreme, you can definitely tell, well, this isn't flat anymore. What if I want it flat? What do I do then? Uh, well, first let's, but even still, like, you know, here, what if I want it banked away? What if I don't, like, what if I want that edge, uh, well, banking away? Control T is how you tilt on, yeah. Um, and so something like that, maybe. Uh, I don't know. This is a lot of guess and check here. Um, and then if you Q to zoom in, right, uh, or whatever you have it mapped to, number pad period, you can press T to bring this menu away. Uh, <laughs> let's say I did that intentionally and not because I forgot, yeah, I misclicked. Uh, control T to tilt, control T to tilt, um, control T to tilt. So we, there's also a setting down here and like your s twisting method, uh, you can do Z up. Uh, so when you're moving your, um, thing on the z-axis it's not going to do any of that twisting uh, that can be that can be very useful um, and then if we go back it will preserve what settings we have so um, I always just manually edit it uh, a lot of this twisting stuff that will be really how your track pl plays um, and like how it feels um, and so it's getting that right can be can be kind of painful honestly um, especially since once you right now if like we we want to edit this curve but we can't do it right now what you have to do you have to do is apply these modifiers so if you click this arrow right next to the X then you can hit apply or control a but um, I I now just hit apply and it, it in 2.8 you could just control a and it's a lot more intuitive but now like there's less real estate so i just end up anyways um but before we do that uh basically just get a curve that you're happy with um it could honestly loop back to the beginning so how how would you do that if you wanted to do that uh which i don't but maybe you would want with your track um let me select the curve uh if you ever can't find something in your object scene you can always just go up top here in your collection and just select it there and tab it into edit mode e to extrude r to rotate and then you can select these f to fill 
same thing works with the geometry we just talked about filling uh, and now we see it applied also to Bezier curves um, and I don't want to do this because I uh, I just don't um, but that's how you that's how you connect things together um, if you want to have like a curve and then it goes into a jump um, what you can do is you can just start a new plane and curve and do the same array curve method. Um, let me quickly show you another thing that people like to do um, that I do not use. You can add a plane, you can go into modifiers and add a subdiv, subdivision uh, surface modifier, and then you can select these and extrude and then rotate and extrude and rotate and extrude and rotate and extrude and rotate, extrude, rotate, uh, extrude, rotate, extrude, rotate, etc. Uh, I don't like this. Uh, I just feel it's hard to just I feel like it's hard to get what I want. Um, but s people definitely do prefer this. Um, so that option is there. I'm going to be sticking with what I know, um, and that is this array curve method. So uh, right now we have one more plane or two more planes than we want we can also just for demonstration purposes keep that number at 34 and I'll show you how to deal with them if we don't want them so now uh, before we basically just get your curve into a way that you like it um, that you think is scaled reasonably well it probably won't be um, but that's what we're doing gameplay test for and then we're gonna iterate over this process so before you um, apply any modifiers you always want to back up a version and so you can do that by Control shift s creates a new version. Um, and I, I'm not going to do that because I'm a boss. And uh, I'm going to hit this merge uh, option on my array. So that way what I have is I have this geometry. And then right after that, I have another bit of geometry. Um, and these vertices will be close. You know, they'll be in the same place. They will be in the same place, but they won't... Um, what's it called, be automatically merged together. So this just automatically merges them. If you always forget, you can either Control-Z and then reapply the modifier, but if it's past that point, you can also do the trick where you tab into edit mode, select A, merge by distance. Um, and that just removes your doubles. But let us, let's now merge. I remember to uh, save a version and then a, you can delete this curve now. Before you could not delete that curve because it's attached to that curve object, but now that we've applied the modifier, we actually have geometry that we can work with. And if you look here, I, like this this still might be too much. Uh, this this might be a good amount of geometry to, to work with, but you don't want to have too many things. So for example, I, well, let me just show you like F to fill, right? Um, sorry, I'm just reinforcing some of the stuff, but we can right click and then subdivide. Right click, subdivide, right click, subdivide. And now you can see, oh, we, we have a lot more, uh, sorry, that's not very visible, is it? Um, let me just like shift, select all of these and like grab them out. So you can see, oh, we, we have a lot more geometry. You can do a lot more like, oh, what if we want this cool fret thing? Uh, I don't, uh, no, you, you don't want that. It's not going to be, it's just going to be more pain to work with, to model, and for texturing, and what have you. So we now have, we now have this curve, uh, and now we have these two faces, which we said that we didn't want, I mean, Q to zoom in, uh, and then we can just hit X to delete these faces, and then we can select these vertices, and maybe move them here in top view, and rotate them. All right. I uh, so now let's uh, maybe let's apply a basic texture to this. So we're going to go to our materials. We're going to have a new material. We're going to create an image texture. We're going to open. Uh, we're going to go to our textures folder, which is in the same directory as your uh, custom track that you've saved. And I uh, you're going to find a texture. Um, this is using a track that I've already uh, made. And let's use maybe this one. And we can't see it because right now we have it set on um, in our solid mode. 
we have it set on mat cap and random we want to go flat and texture um, and now you can now we can see it how the game sees it and if you notice it automatically <laughs> correctly UV mapped it which is actually awesome this is exactly what we want um, sometimes though it's not exactly what you want so what you can do I uh, you can go here control click right control click I uh, and then you can you you to unwrap and then you can follow active quads and that actually let me go to the UVs so you can see what's going on uh, let me change the settings here to be uh, flat and texture so right now each face each, each face is you know just here and all of sorry is is in the UV editing tab and everyone is stretched to the maximum but what happens if I like scale the UVs here nothing else is attached with it or if I scale it here to zoom like you know now I have a repeated texture here but nowhere else so sometimes you have to or like if I want to also um, if I want to rotate it here by 90 degrees it doesn't do it for everything else so how do I do that well you could just go and you could select all and you could like rotate it by 90 degrees and that might work for your texture but then what if you want to okay say they're not perfectly lined up here and you want to like scale on a certain direction you know like here now we have some definite seams from where I'm going from one texture to another I don't want that so the way you fix that is you uh, always uh, control click to that face which is you correctly UV mapped and then you can U to bring up the unwrap menu and then follow active quads or F and now you can see the difference here is now they're not just in the same place but now I can you know A to select everything S and X to scale it. and I can scale it in and it makes it you know tile less and what have you so you can scale it in a whole lot and that just changes the look. Um, so that's something that I use absolutely all the time, is follow active quads. Everywhere I go, follow active quads, follow active quads. Um, if you're unwrapping a fence, you have the one thing that you unwrap, and then everything else, follow active quads if you can. Um, yeah, so I, you can also, um, this is going to be our first Blender add-on, uh, is you can... If you bring up the end pan panel here, you can see here we have a UV squares add-on, and you this does not come pre-installed with Blender. Uh, you have to um, download it, uh, UV squares, um, and you just download it and literally install it. Uh, it's really simple. Um, back to Blender, uh, you can see right now. Are all our things are squares, um, but sometimes you have a geometry. You select everything, and then you to grid or to square grid, and that changes what it looks like. Obviously, it's not going to be you know it's nicely unwrapped here, but just for future reference, you select you know this face, and then you say to square grid, and it just makes it into this UV over here into a square. So that is insanely useful. Use it all the time. You can also like select all of these and if you like you know just give them a random uv map you're like oh well this looks all like how would i f you could either like go into top view and you could like select all of these at once and then i could like you and then project from view and then scale it here and then it's like it's close but it's it's not quite Right, if you if you can see like here we have this line going across, but it, you can see it's projected from view. So what we'd have to do is you can scale on the y, so you can scale s y zero to scale on the y by zero, and you can do the same thing up here. Obviously, what would happen if we did both of these at once? Scale y zero. Okay, yeah, uh, and then you can go here and you can like scale x by zero scale x by zero so now that you're getting less warping here or warping in the same way that you expect um, but you can also just select all of these and to grid by shape and it automatically does that manual process so you can go here uu and uh, we can try to do to grid by shape 
and then scale it up here and bring it here. And boom, we have our correctly UV map thing, which is absolutely awesome. You can also like scale it here and like, oh, that doesn't look correct. You can also alt click to loop, to loop select, alt click or shift alt click or whatever it is. Um, and then GY and then just you know zoom in and make sure that texture matches up which is awesome um so i use uv squares absolutely everywhere i use uh follow active quads absolutely everywhere um those are the two most helpful things to have in your toolkit if that doesn't work try a basic uv unwrap uh, try a cube project and if all else fails you can project from view and manually edit um so those are the uv mapping methods Anyways, uh, let's continue on with the track, I guess. Um, so we're not going to add any uh, grass geometry right here. We're just going to get the basic layout. Um, this is why it's a layout test. I'm also not going to... Uh, yeah, Blender... 3D modeling in Blender takes forever. Um, just because, yeah, it, it in any program, 3D modeling takes a while. Um, and especially as I'm stepping through as a tutorial. So... Uh, a lot of the boring minutia I'm going to um, leave as an exercise to the reviewer. Uh, and so I'm just going to keep on plugging along, and I hope you will forgive me for that. Um, so now I want, uh, I want to add stuff here going to the right, and I want this to be more jagged. Um, and I think the, you, can, you could do more curve array stuff. I like to have a healthy dose of 90 degree turns, etc. So I'm just going to go to the good old manual uh, and I'm going to make sure this is around the same. I do literally does not matter scale unless that's something that's like a gimmick of your track. But otherwise, yeah, people do not care about scale as long as it feels good. So if sections are wider than another, uh, like it's both really hard to tell and actually it adds some cool you know, life and dynamics uh, when you do have things of different scale. So don't worry about things not matching um, and things of that nature. Actually, uh, we probably do want to say, add, go into vertex select mode. Actually, I'm gonna use this as our first instance of proportional editing. This is another thing they're gonna use all the time. O is the hotkey for that. Or, um, you go up here and you click this. There's also an option to hit connected only, which you might want, uh, or like the different fall off strength. But you can also scroll in or out with your mouse wheel and you can see the rest of the track goes along with it. So this is how we're gonna be editing the curve after we've applied the modifiers and we don't wanna go back and make more stuff. Um, or like you've already made the ground geometry around it and now you have to edit the road itself uh, proportional editing is probably the way you want to do it. So we're going to have this as a minimal strength, uh, or, you know, enough strength to actually have some feel to it. And then we're going to bring this in. Um, and we're going to, we're going to do that maybe here. And to notice we're also slightly warping the UVs here. Um, so you just have to be careful about, about that. Um, but just these small imperfections are really what, uh, makes what well, makes a track uh, more lively, uh, more depth going on, uh, rather than just I'm the same constant width throughout. Um, and it just doesn't play as well. Uh, it doesn't look as good, uh, just more natural um, when you do have all these different depth stuff. Um, obviously, you have to be careful from editing the base shape too far if you have something that you really like already. But in general, uh, yeah, proportional editing, you know, making it more natural is, is always a good thing. Um, so maybe that's something, maybe that's something. Uh, 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 here's, here's a really cool uh, thing that you do not have to remember, shift tilde, uh, and you can just fly through your course. That's kind of cool, shift tilde, uh, and then left click to cancel, except it doesn't really set your view, so you can cue to zoom in. Anyways, right, so we looked at proportional editing to move this around and shift tilde. Uh, to move stuff around, and now we're just going to extrude on the y direction, and I, uh, like, I'm just estimating, uh, and right, I right-click to cancel, and then I have to control C to actually cancel. 
I'm presuming that, uh, here's a cool thing, uh, this, I'm presuming that that is about one wheelie length long. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm hoping that you're going to start here and you're going to have to do two tight turns and then you're going to have this nice wheelie and then you're going to have a longer turn and you're going to go in here and this one you're not going to have enough time for a turn but you're going to realign slightly and then you're going to go out this way. Um, but I'm presuming that this distance is uh, like what, around one wheelie uh, scale. Um, so then uh, how do I remove these is you go on this and you press and hold and then you can erase here. Um, and then you can get back to here. This is your normal box select. So um, so that's what I'm hoping scale wise for. So I can go like down here if I really wanted to and then scale it on the local y axis, right? That's our G or S Y Y. You can grab G Y Y. And yeah, that's that's about the same distance. So now I'm just gonna manually rotate into place and write it this is not um, this is not perfectly 90 degrees anymore, and that's okay. If you did want to, um, you can bring up this end panel and then you can adjust the Z to be like negative ninety. Um there uh, as a small side note, uh, if you wanted to go like you scale this up and then you see that it uh, or you scale this up and I uh, oh right so we still have our proportional editing turned on so you have to turn it off here or the hotkey is O um, that's something that you know why is why are things moving when I don't expect them to move why do I have this random thing here proportional editing if you turn it on there's a good chance you forget to turn it off but notice if we scale it up here and then look at the end panels uh, in the view tab I uh, or where is it item. Uh, I guess you have to go into object mode. Uh, we we actually, even though we scaled it up in edit mode, on the object mode scale we haven't scaled it at all. So that's something to be wary of. And you can control A, apply all transforms. So that's, if why isn't my modifier working? Um, is mainly the main thing where it comes into play. I actually don't encounter this anymore, um, but for a lot of Blender users, I, why isn't something that I expect it to work not working? like a modifier, meter modifier, um, sc scaling sometimes, uh, try uh, setting these, uh, applying your transforms. Those, so that's the key for that is control A, um, and then all transforms. Um, yeah, just there's a, there's a common thing of, oh, why isn't this working? Have you tried flying transforms? So uh, I don't know how much of, that, of an issue that is, but that might be worth noting. So now we have our origin point back at the center. How do we fix that? Right click, set origin, origin to yacht geometry. Boom, now we are on our way and I don't remember what the scale was, but that's fine because we're all eyeballing any, everything anyways. Um, so they're obviously gonna go from here and they're gonna have a short right turn. So what, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have them have a drop here and then we're also gonna rotate this, uh, R to rotate and then X. So now they're gonna rotate, and so they don't immediately crash into this wall. We're gonna we're gonna give them a reason to not crash into that wall. Um, so let me go back into matcap and random, so that I can better 3D model. And um, actually, let me go to top view, and then I'm gonna Control R to loop cut, and then I'm gonna you know these are all just eyeballing the width of things. I uh, and maybe I want to also bring this down. So that's uh, GZ. Um, and I'm just all eyeballing it. Uh, if I did want to uh, extrude it out on this direction, uh, let me see, yeah, EYY, extrude it on the local Y. If that doesn't work, you can also try going to normal and then uh, EY or EXEZ. In this case, EZ worked um, on that same direction. So now you're not getting any uh, harsh things there. And then does GZ work? It does not. Uh, GX does though. So um, yeah, that's cool. Um, let me go back into global view. Um, and then what do I wanna do? Maybe I want to add a split path. Um, and I'm gonna do this manually. 
Um, there are creating split paths can be tricky. Um, and I'm just going to do actually, mm, it ba basically it just boils down to, okay, I just I extrude, I do nothing, I scaled up, I extrude out, um, E Y Y, uh, to extrude in the Y axis. And then I just add an object here manually in object mode. So like a peach gardens, uh, bush that I just put on top of it. Um, that's one way of doing it. Uh, you can also just put the bush there in the first place and then join the two geometries. So let me just quickly sketch out what that would look like. So I have a cube here and then I scaled up and I maybe scaled up this way. And then I, I join this with this shift, select control J to join, right? And then uh, actually I want this, these to be lower. So here's another blender hockey. Uh, sorry, these are getting thrown left, right, and center without any order to them, but I didn't want to just give you, oh, here's, you know, modeling thing here, here's loop cuts, here's extrusions, here's filling, here's proportional editing, all at the very beginning. Um, that can be, you know, just overwhelming, like, hey, you, you want to create a track. Um, so I'm just showing it to you as I go along. What did I just do? I select linked on the bottom left. Uh, nope, that's the wrong. Uh, select linked. Um... And what I uh, was the key for that? That's L. L to select linked in edit mode. Um, and it just select linked faces or vertices. So now I can GZ um, and to just move this whole thing up and down. Uh, okay, so like, oh, that's that's close, but I want these to be, I want these to actually be on the same place. So how do we do this? Uh, one thing you can do is you can select this and I want to extrude it out on the y direction and This will give us the correct y values that we want um, You notice here. It's not actually it is in line. Maybe I don't know. Is it in line? Uh, e y y Yeah, so it's going from the local y-axis um, And now we say okay cool now we have yep. These are the these are the points. I want to match with this um Oh, and actually it went in this direction as well. Um, so we're just going to do this and we can select this face and then scale Z zero. And that's how we, that's how we do that. Uh, it looks like here we created some problems uh, with our, what's it called? Um, what is it called? Uh, extrusion. I must have right clicked to cancel and forgot to uh, do stuff. So I duplicated normals. So if we rewind, Right here, if I grab it, yeah, see I have two things in the same place. So I'm going to scale Z0, and then how do I fix this? I can select this face and delete it, and then I can move this one up, and they're close. And now, with the power of merging, I can go here, I can zoom in by pressing Q, and I can select this one then, and merge, and at last. And we can go here. And you can go select this one, shift select, and M, M to merge, and at last. If you notice, we had some uh, visual graphical things. Uh, if I zoom in here, like what's what's going on here? Why well, can't see things? You are in really close. It's right now clipping. Um, and you can change this in your options by going N to bring up Nelly and for Nelly um, to bring up the options menu, and you can change this clip distance here. All the way. Uh, I think the defaults are, are good at 0.1 because you generally don't want to you don't want that level of detail uh, displayed because you're yeah that, that's just not the scale for Mario Kart Wii stuff so now we're going to select these and we can maybe extrude it on the x-axis and now boom look at that we have we have this and now you can merge this to this shift select merge at last and now we have, now we can extrude all of these out in the X direction and boom. Now we have, now we have cool stuff. Select, face select, and then we can bring this down maybe. Um, and we can just, <laughs> I said this as an example, but actually this might be, this might be what we're ending up doing. Uh, one thing that I'm noticing right now is just, this is gonna be a pretty harsh transition uh, to get into the split paths. 
Um, and I've definitely made this mistake before, as you can, well, I, I was going to say as you can tell, but I, you have to trust me on that one. I'm just going to select all of these vertices, and I'm just going to GY to move them on the Y direction. Um, so one thing that I, I haven't mentioned, but working on the X and Y axis, uh, or Z axes, in Blender is far easier than working off axis. Um, so if you have things that are 91 degrees, and then you're trying to work with that, you have to do a lot of local or normal... Um, like uh, movement here um, and so you know GYY etc um, and that can be eh, frustrating at times uh, so it's in just in general it's easier to work on X and Y axes uh, obviously more interesting tracks do explore the full range of spaces um, but yeah just in general uh, you'll find that working in X and Y axes are easier than working in um, other ones, <laughs> if that if that made sense, uh, I can go on a linear algebra rant, but um, about how I hate it. So right now, you notice if I move this vertex, it's not connected to this object, and that's okay, um, because what's what we're gonna have, what we're gonna do, I well, one way to do this, you could say let's take this face, um, go into face mode, and we could like knife cut, and let's knife cut really close to here. And then let's knife cut up. Um, and sometimes it doesn't work because knife tool sucks. Why does knife tool suck? Oh my goodness, I hate knife tool. So <laughs> I don't use this. I uh, actually what would? Okay, so I'm gonna s separate by selection, and now I'm gonna do a knife tool, and now it will work because it will work. And then what we can do is we can now join this again we can select everything, merge by distance. And what we can also do is here's another Blender hotkey. Uh, sorry, what did I just do? So I want this to connect up with the base of this ground, or this uh, road to connect with the base of this bush. That's not needed, but it will help us when we want to UV unmap, unwrap this uh, road part so that we still have nice quads here. Um, and that generally our geometry is connected. So K, sorry, uh, K is how you do knife tool. So K, and then you can just draw on surfaces, and then you can press enter, and it does stuff. It cuts into the geometry. Uh, maybe a better demonstration of this is something like that. And you uh, then press enter, and you have a nice cut through your geometry. I, I don't know how to use the knife tool very well. So I, uh, th the hacky solution that I use is um, go select a face that you want to cut into but can't seem to, P to separate by selection. And then once you're in here, you can tab into, uh, this is a new object. You can tab into edit mode. You can uh, select this face or you don't have to, but uh, it kind of makes it easier to visualize. And then you can do your knife cut and then enter, and then you can join it back up. Now, I uh, you might notice, say, hang on, well, this this is it's close, but it's it's not really lined up. So how do we line this up? I uh, what we're gonna do is here's another Blender hotkey for you, GG, and this slides along an edge, slides around an edge. You can also I uh, I don't know how well this will work here. Uh, mm, yeah, maybe this one. So like I can GG to slide it in here, but if I, what if I want to slide it out? You can do GGC and that'll s slide it out like a clamping thing. Um, GGC uh, clamp, GGC, and now you're not clamped anywhere. Anyways, um, that might be useful or it might be too much knowledge. I don't know, um, but we're gonna, regardless, we're gonna edge slide it. So by GG, and then we're gonna shift, right? As we're moving around to shift to make our movement slower and then get it close to lined up. It doesn't really matter. Um, and then we're gonna select this bottom one. We're gonna Q and okay, it does look like we need to increase our uh, clip start or decrease it. So uh, N to bring up this panel view and then clip start distance. And uh, I wanna select this one. 
I want to select this one and merge at last. So I want the cube to be merged up next to the road. And it looks like here they are merged together, which is nice. Um, this is merged up together. Awesome. So we're also going to do the same thing here. And we're going to uh, select this p face, uh, P to separate by selection. And then we're going to go into edit mode. And actually, instead of doing a knife cut, we can also do a loop cut by control R. And then we can slide it over. So that's that's maybe cool. Um, the reason why we don't just, uh, well, can't you just do a loop cut on the whole thing? If we do a loop cut here, it's cutting through a lot more of the geometry. And that's going to create a lot more faces. Um, sometimes it's fine to leave those extra faces. Um, but other like th that's how you do it um, if you were if you actually cared about topology flow. So right now, when we have this edge cut, or this knife cut here, you can see it created a giant n-gon at the top here. Um, so this is no longer a quadrilateral, but it has this extra vertex here. So um, if I was to do a loop cut, like I would do here, then uh, it uh, keeps you know just all of the uh, edge flow and whatever. But um, it's not that useful for Mario Kart Wii, and um, uh, Knife Tool does the job better and doesn't create all these extra triangles that Mario Kart Wii is especially sensitive to. I guess uh, a general upper limit is 25k uh, triangles, uh, is, but it can lag as low as 12,000 triangles, um, depending on how many complicated extra stuff you have but sometimes or like large texture sizes uh depending on your density of your kcl um your collision you know how many triangles are in a specific area in your collision um that has an effect so i uh, but yeah generally twenty five thousand is a good upper limit for a track so we're going to select here all right loop cut with control r and then we're going to select this bottom uh vertex and then we're going to shift select that one and we're going to merge, uh, actually, hold on, we want to merge it the other way. So we want to merge at last. You can also do it at first. I don't remember to do it. Um, yeah, uh, I just did something really cool. And that's an add-on as well. This might be too advanced um, for some of you. Um, or not too advanced, but just more than you want to do right now. Um, I, for one, am definitely someone that wants to take the easy way this is the harder way um or quote unquote harder way but it will save you a lot of time in the long run definitely do recommend so you could like extrude it on the x and then merge and you know do that but some say you have like this going out here on the uh, y direction and you can see here at the top what what some of our uh what some of our knife cut st stuff did, um, which is which is expected. But you can say here, well, what if I want, you know, this to extrude out on the x direction, and then I also want this to be filled in anyways, you know. But how then? How do I guesstimate this distance, right? You 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 definitely can just guesstimate that, um, and uh, that is definitely one way of doing it. Or you can go. Uh, and uh, get the F2 add-on blender. So this is, oh, it's actually already in Blender. Yes, so you just go edit preferences, type in, go to your add-ons, and then F2, and you enable F2. And then the, the thing I use this for all the time is you have, you know, if I just wanna fill these in, right? What's the command for fill? F to fill, it creates the triangle. I don't want a triangle, I want a quadrilateral. So uh, the F2 add-on allows you to just click this and hit F, and then you right-click to confirm that placement, um, or to cancel any additional placement. And this is an absolute game changer. I use it all the time. Um, and then I, yeah, I, we're gonna, I guess just finish this out. Yep. Uh, sorry, my voice is getting tired, but that is okay. I will. Uh, I will keep going. Uh, in the pain as my 
voice starts spewing blood. And here's another thing, F. Actually, it didn't work because it's trying to go somewhere else. Um, you know, it's trying to fill with like this and that, maybe. What is it trying to fill with? It's trying to fill with something that's not uh, correct. Let's see if I can. No, okay. I read in the post where I where I found out this trick. Like apparently you can, you if you put your cursor into a different place, you can influence what it tries to connect to. I have no idea. Uh, it doesn't seem to have worked for me. Okay, why is this all messed up? It's literally just a cube, right? Is this not a cube? Well, apparently not. Um, so here's the nice thing about us working on an axis. Basically, we can just scale y zero and maybe scale x0, and look, we've we've cleared ourselves out. Uh, one thing that we'll need to do uh, is select this thing, scale y0, and then if you notice, we also changed uh, how this, so we can scale x0. Um, yeah, so what did I do? I just noticed that these were askew for some reason. I probably selected a vertex when I was moving stuff around, um, and so I just, uh, since we're working on an axis, I can just scale x0. Uh, sometimes you need to scale xx0, but that doesn't work all the time. You can try to do local stuff, or at the very worst, you can manually do it, slash eyeball it, top view, uh, and just do stuff that way. Uh, actually, I'm not, I'm not convinced that this is straight, but that might just be myself having an illusion I'm so right now there's a bad shading here um, and I'm not going to worry about it uh, this indicates something for future um, but uh, it's not of relevance to us right now so we're just going to select these remember like if we went to top view here we tried to select this bottom point and this one we're actually selecting this top one right so you just have to be aware of that um, alt z is how you get into extra mode for the curious we're not going to use that. Um, uh, uh, Z. Aha. Uh -huh. So sometimes you can get into these weird states, um, and we want to go back into solid mode. Um, and the way you get yourself out of these weird states is just by asking, um, and just with enough time, you'll figure it out. So we're going to extrude in the y axis. We're going to get it pretty close. And then we're just going to select these Q to zoom in here, and it looks like we weren't close at all. G, Y, oh, it looks like we were close. Um, and then I'm using shift to make this nicer. And good enough. And Q to zoom in. And I want I uh, this to line up with my road. Um, and notice this isn't perfectly square anymore. That doesn't matter. We're not going to worry about it select all these or you can control select um, and then extrude on the Y E to extrude right so now we added this and split paths and these probably need to be wider so I'm gonna uh, G to grab and move it GX to lock it to the X axis and then we're we're pretty close to the end I I guess let's um, Let's build out a ramp here. So we're going to extrude on the y-axis. Then we're going to, uh, you know, GZ to move this up here. I'm just guesstimating all of these. And then uh, uh, maybe we want a mushroom. And we're actually going to leave this mushroom for a KMP section. Um, and we're just going to take this beginning. And we're going to, honestly, I think it's easier to just manually extrude, rotate, grab, extrude, rotate, extrude, rotate. And uh, yeah, that might work. Uh, and then, you know, you're saving as you go. I'm not gonna, actually I should save. Save, and I'm gonna go back to textures, and I wanna go call it tutorial blender I uh, test version. 
and um, and then if we look at these textures here in viewport or just in uh, flat and then texture and then theme uh, you can see that these this is our default UVs um, we're you typically model without UVs because as you can see here when we extruded it out it doesn't know what to do with extruding so uh, actually let's 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 texture this really quickly how do I do this uh, well this is my super powerful UV awesome editing skills so you can uh, the way I'd do this uh, is I'd U and then follow active quads boom done so what did I do I selected I starting from the part that's not textured and control selecting sh picking shortest path to the thing that is textured U to bring up that menu and then follow active quads F um, and it just works now for this um, we are going to new texture we're gonna have an image texture and let's say we want let's see maybe we want this one or actually let's maybe use this one it's a bit more complicated so you have to figure out what's going on so we go to top view just because it's going to be easier with what we're working with and let's maybe unwrap this we're just going to uu to unwrap and then we're going to go to our uv editing tab and you can see and q to zoom in uh, you can see here's our thing here's our thing so let's scale it up and if we move it on the x-axis over boom look at that so that's what we wanted and then a uh, i right here we can do a knife cut from here to here and then we can also select these and say we want this to be uu to unwrap and then we're gonna uh, scale it move it on the x axis and now these line up um, and if they don't you can also right click in here and mirror on the x-axis and that might be closer to what you want so that's how you do hard edges there um, um, as you can see though actually uh, oops yuck um, sorry let me just go into layout because for whatever reason yeah uh, as you can see here well this actually goes out so how do you get this going out um, and honestly <laughs> I don't I don't really know so uh, yeah UV mapping can be can be painful like you have this you have this texture and it, it has a flow but how do you get it like going out and doing stuff so the I mean the what you could do is you could add like a loop cut here and then you can say yes I want it to f fall in here but then I also want uh, sorry let me I can scroll in here uh, sorry I haven't been I don't think I've said that but you can scroll up here and then you can uh, go around different things. So you can like scale it on the x-axis maybe. Um, and so you can actually say like here to here, I want to uh, scale these in on the x direction. And I want to scale these in on the x direction. And you can see it looks god awful. And not what we want. Um, but uh, we can also just try just selecting all of these and then just UU to just select them all. And like, am I, am I okay with this bit of seaming? Maybe, maybe. Um, and then I, I noticed that I have dark bits on here, but I don't have dark bits on here. So how do I fix that? I can just scale it and then move it over on the x-axis uh, yeah so uh, cool oh we still need to do this so I with that I can just UU and it should automatically be pretty close I can select these shift selecting them um, or box selecting them I can uh, GX right sorry I'm swapping between edit and object mode pretty pretty quickly if you haven't noticed um, and I do apologize. Let me. Uh, I s tried to select L to select linked, but since I joined the geometry, it's no longer just selecting these. So I'm just going to uh, control shift select to try to pick shortest path and fill. And that actually seemed to work first try, which I'm impressed with. 
And now I want a different texture for this, and I want a cube project. So a cube project, or UC, and I'm going to scale this up. And I actually want a different material for this, so I'm going to go new, and I want a new image texture. Open, and uh, I maybe I want this, and maybe I want this. Let's see, and then I assign to all these, to all these, and uh, yeah, that looks <laughs> like it exists. It doesn't look good per se, uh, and why is that? That's just because these. These cute, this texture is very uh, tileable and seamless. Um, whereas something like the Peach Gardens texture is a lot more detailed, vibrant, and there's like very clear delineations between this is a side and this is near the end of the texture. Um, this is does not care. Um, it makes it the easiest texture to just, you know, you cube project and call it good, um, but it also, you know, has its own pro set of problems like this. Um, and if I then want to, you know, separate this, well, right now I already have it selected, so I can't just P to separate uh, by selection, or I can uh, also P and then uh, select everything, A, and then P by material, and then this is different um, than this. And uh, I think that's where I'm going to leave it off. Um, right now we have three textures. Um, we have our road that we created using a ray curve. We have the split path. Um, and in the next part, we're going to look at how do I actually get this in game. Um, and then uh, once we've figured out those stuff, then we're going to edit this track some more um, and just keep going. All right, I'll see you in the next one.